What's up, Couch Fam? I wanted to do one last Dynasty video before we fully shift gears into redraft season. This will have a lot of relevance to redraft, and you'll see why. I recently joined a high stakes $500 TriFlex Superflex PPR Tight End Premium Dynasty Best Ball League. 12 team, by the way. I know that was a mouthful, but it's super fun. Basically, you start two flex spots, you start one super flex spot and also one QB, you start two running backs, three wide receivers, and one tight end. It is best ball scoring, so there are no stardom sit -ums. I keep saying we, because here's another caveat on top of this being a high stakes league where you can win thousands of dollars. I let my followers draft this team. And to be more accurate, I set up a virtual front office. We had a war room on Discord where we went through every pick. We had voice calls. We did a lot of scouting. It was a lot of fun. It's super intense and it takes a lot of patience and just great people with a lot of respect to even achieve and accomplish something like this. So I want to thank my community and thank the captains that helped me lead this. So thank you guys. It was a great experience and I think we absolutely crush this draft and if you want to enter a league like this check out my friends at ffpc they are the home of high stakes fantasy football it's great to be in a league with your buddies and whatnot but sometimes you want to do a dynasty league with other people or sometimes your buddies don't want to do a high stakes dynasty league well here's an organized easy way to play just check them out at ffpc and if you use my link below in the description that link right there you're gonna get 25 dollars off any 35 dollar or more expensive league so it's an absolute no-brainer and it really helps out my channel so check out the link below and check out ffpc that's where we had this draft and that's where we have this league so we started off with a bang in this draft we went with josh allen and lamar jackson we made a lot of trades like it was it started right away the trade started brewing before the draft even started this is a slow draft otherwise i would have recorded this as a live thing you know would have been all video but it was an eight hour timer so we started off with two killer quarterbacks and then we didn't know what we we're gonna do per se we were leaning towards a win now team but this is what happened. This guy drafted Patrick Mahomes, team one, and he had several opportunities to draft Travis Kelsey. Once it was 303 on the clock, the third pick of the third round was on the clock, and this guy passed up on Kelsey several times. I was hitting the table. I was like, let's go, let's trade up, let's get Kelsey, and let's win this league. And we did that. We made a trade. We traded up to the 303 spot. We got Kelsey. Now everybody knew, not just us, everybody knew we're going win now because Kelsey is the ultimate win now guy and in a tight end premium league Kelsey is king last year in tight end premium pretty much anybody who had Travis Kelsey won their leagues dynasty best ball read whatever it was league winner is an understatement for Kelsey last year now moving on to round four something happened that never happened to me we got quadruple sniped now you're probably saying like Shut up, I've been sniped five times in a row before like it's happened. But peep this, peep what happened. We actually got double sniped right before our pick at 4.07. We got double sniped by the same guy. And in my community, there's a lot of experienced fantasy players. We've been in a lot of drafts, especially me. And I've never been double sniped. That's right, sniped and then sniped and then it's my turn by the same guy. So the best diet sniped us twice. He's a very smart guy and we actually scouted him out. I'm not going to dox him because the information is not public, but he left his email. There's a place where you don't hide your email. We Googled him and he ended up being a reality TV star star we actually he was on one of those reality tv shows where you had, like lost a bunch of weight and then like he, he was big and then he lost a bunch of weight and uh, we looked up everything you know he seems to have a great career seems to be very smart um gained all the weight back <laughs> after 10 years it seems like too he's eating good but he's very smart and it didn't even take a genius to know like we had josh allen we had Travis Kelsey. He knew we we're going to win now, and he knew we loved that stack with Stefan Diggs. Who wouldn't? So he took him, and then he took Devontae Adams, and full panic ensued. 
I at least remember how I felt about it. I was in full panic mode because I was like, man, we're going to get Devontae Adams or Stefan Diggs or Tyreek Hill or Cooper Cup. Like they're going towards the end of round four. Like we'll be able to get them. And when this happened, I panicked. I think the rest of the people in the community panicked too. But it's a slow draft. We regrouped. We stayed the course. Well, we actually went totally different course, but we stayed on a course what we thought was a good course. So we definitely switched it up and we went Austin Eckler there. Fast forward a couple more rounds, we went with Nick Chubb. Now, I have a lot of experience on this website and these type of leagues, so I told my community like, hey, this is what's gonna probably happen. And it did, I was like, People in these type of leagues, these high stakes dynasty leagues, they don't really value RBs and they really hate on RBs that don't catch. Now, Nick Chubb doesn't catch, I, I, I admit that, but he, I think he'll be catching a lot more balls this year. Won't be like anything extreme, but I think we're gonna see more targets in the pass game for Nick Chubb. So we drafted him and then came a pivotal moment in our draft. This was like a movie. So everyone's looking at us, right? Once you got Travis Kelsey, huge target on your back. We got Josh Allen, we got Lamar Jackson, we got Kelsey. I mean, we're literally talking about the tight end one last year, the RB one last year. Now we got Nick Chubb, okay? So, and you need wide receivers to win a best ball league, like you just do. And so here was a pivotal moment. We were talking about taking Calvin Ridley since the beginning of the draft. He was one guy we loved and Thank God we were on that hype before Calvin really just started getting hyped the past week. We did this draft a while ago, all right? So we love Calvin Ridley. He was a basically a requirement for our team. Who should we pick here? Derek Henry or Calvin Ridley? If we passed up on Calvin Ridley and he was drafted by the best diet, our buddy again right there, he's as very next pick. Uh, what round is this? Uh, 7.04, right? We got the 7.03 right here. If we missed on Calvin Ridley and we got sniped again, it would be more detrimental to our team. But we knew that there was a really good chance, maybe even like a 90% chance, whatever it is, 70% chance, he was going to go Derrick Henry, who's just a great home run hitter, a great value pick, and will help us win the league. So what we decided to do is risk it because we thought there was a much higher chance Calvin Ridley would fall to us. So Calvin Ridley, 70% chance he'd fall to us with our very next pick at 7.06, only about a 20% chance Derrick Henry would fall to us. So we risked it and went Derrick Henry. Now everyone's looking at us like, what are these idiots doing or idiot? Cause they think it's probably just one person drafting. What are you, what are you doing? You guys don't have any wide receivers. And then boom. Now, I'm not exaggerating or anything when how people think of us because they wrote like they start when they traded with us and, and wrote trade messages and message wars, they were very nice. Once we started making these next couple of moves, everyone got real feisty with us and they were really scared. That target on our back, we had a target on our head now. We had a target on our front side, our back side, our shoes, our our kneecaps. Every, there was huge targets everywhere. Everyone noticed us and was like, oh, crap. Calvin Ridley fell to us. Then we got Amari Cooper. Okay, now we got some low-end wide receiver ones, high-end wide receiver twos. Oh, boy, this is looking like a real team now. You should be really scared. This wasn't just my opinion. Other people in the community thought that, and we noticed a, a personality change on how other competitors started talking to us in the messages on message boards and the memos you put in the trade offers. It got really snappy really quick. Uh, we missed out on Tyler Lockett, which was unfortunate. Again, our, uh, our homie, the best diet, uh, sniped Tyler Lockett from us, which was fine. So we sent out a trade to overpay and, and we got Lockett. So we overpaid a little bit. We uh, spent 11th round startup pick and a 13th round startup pick to go get Tyler Lockett. We needed depth at wide receiver. We really like Lockett in a best ball league. So we went and got Tyler Lockett. We got Dalton Schultz, who the Texans are going to throw to a ton. He could be 
one of the top receivers on that Houston Texans team. It's 1.5 points per reception for the tight end position. And I see a lot of garbage time targets going towards Schultz. So now we're looking good, right? We got wide receivers. We got a couple tight ends, a couple quarterbacks. So the next step was kind of like, we're going to need a QB3. And there was a pretty good QB run earlier with guys like Mac Jones, Stafford, Sam Howell. Once you see Mac Jones go, you got to kind of start to panic there. And so we, our options were to go with Tannehill or Baker and Trask because we wanted to lock up that Tampa Bay quarterback position. So we went with Baker and Trask. That way uh, we don't have to worry about the bye week, right? Both are quarterbacks. Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson have the same bye week. That was a big problem. So now we 100% have that Tampa Bay quarterback position on lock. We'll at least score some points that week when our two main quarterbacks are on by. And we have that wiggle room to maybe Baker might break our lineup and get in there once or two times, something like that. And the rest of the draft, pretty self-explanatory. I'll give you a moment to just look over the board, look over our picks. Here's our team. Here's the board. You know, you can pause the video if you want uh, to see our roster mention these two general notes i kind of talked about this earlier and then i want to mention some specific notes that did happen during this specific draft so again rbs are disrespected in this league and i get why look it's a super flex dynasty league it's best ball like that makes sense for this format you want the boom or bust players rbs are very consistent they score less points and in dynasty they last the least so it makes a lot of sense other than Bijan, who's this absolute phenom talent and some other names sometimes rbs will get disrespected rbs that are labeled as these guys don't catch passes get disrespected way more but henry caught a few passes actually people like don't know that but he's labeled as a guy who doesn't catch passes past couple years he's actually improved that a lot and been catching a lot more and like i said nick chubb i think he'll get some more targets this year as well also even though it's tight end premium, for some reason, tight ends most of the time do still go undervalued. You can legit start three tight ends in this type of league and you will be fine. I always remind my community about this. In a normal league, a top six tight end could be used as a flex, okay, and, and in a normal league. In a tight end premium league, a top 10 tight end could be a great flex star. So that's right. You can really start three tight ends and it's actually smart. So that's just one like little strategy that you can use in these type of leagues to help you win. Especially in a high stakes league, you're probably not going to get a huge advantage. It's not like your home league where you're drafting with like a bunch of idiots who just draft you know, Bears players if it's in Chicago or Packers players if it's in Wisconsin, like whatever like that. Like you're not going to run into these like weird Homer pick guys in your in these high stakes league. It's going to usually be people who know what they're doing. And some of the people in this league actually have won thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on this site alone. Some specific notes that happened in this league that I wanted to tell you. Zay Flowers fell a ton. I imagine his stock is rising now that some reports have came out that Zay Flowers is the best wide receiver in camp. Yes, better than Bateman and Odell Beckham. That's like literally what the report says. And also Alan Lazard fell a little bit. Maybe a little bit weird for who will likely be uh, Aaron Rodgers' second favorite target is someone he already has rapport with. Uh, Alan Lazard isn't that great. He's not a huge boom player. But then again, he is kind of used as a tight end. So he will get a lot of snaps. Elijah Moore is not there. And he could get some touchdowns because that's what tight ends do. So we'll see how that goes. We did get Alan Lazard super late. What round did we get him? Round 16. Oh, boy. Well, there you have it, folks. That was our $500 dynasty draft we did 26 round startup draft let me know what you think of our team everyone in the community was basically saying i've never seen a team this amazing and i have to agree i'm being as non-biased as possible but i want to know your opinion hey do we need a reality check is this team really not that good are we not going to win first place this year because i really think we have the best team by far and that we 
absolutely crushed it. And make sure you guys do follow the link below in the description to check out FFPC. Again, you're gonna get $25 off any league that's $35 or more if it's your first time on the website. An amazing deal and really helps support the channel. I'll be coming out with a lot more redraft content. We're gonna say goodbye to Dynasty content for now on this channel and focus a lot on redraft. And I'll see you guys on the next video slash live stream. Good luck this year. Let's crush it in those drafts.